Crusaders to the Nerd Crusade Podcast. This is episode 36. Uh, I'm your host, Ian, as always, and with me uh, is Courtney. Hello. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie, uh, Soka, uh, a little bit of our preview kind of view of uh, Castlevania Nocturne, um, as well as Wheel of Time and the latest episode of Ahsoka. And then we'll have some gaming news with uh, what's going on at PlayStation uh, what's going on with Xbox Activision uh, merger and a, kind of a first impression of Phantom Liberty for Cyberpunk. So let's jump right into it uh, with Ahsoka first. This is the second to last episode. Um, Yay. <laughs> we basically saw kind of like the showdown between uh, Ezra, Sabim, Ahsoka, and uh, Shin, the mercenary Jedi apprentice. Um, a little bit with uh, the main uh, mercenary uh, put by Ray Stevens, but like Ahsoka kind of like, bailed on that fight almost immediately. Yeah, she really pieced out quickly <clears throat> on that one, which kind of sucked because that would have been nice to see a, a good Jedi on Jedi fight. But uh, I I did enjoy the fight with uh, Urza and um, Ezra. Ezra, Urza, whatever. We, we were just introduced to him. Yeah, Ezra, so Ezra and, and all the uh, stormtroopers. Yeah, well, mostly his fight against uh, Shin. Yeah, Shin. Yeah. Which was good. And I liked how they showed how his fighting style is much different and not using the lightsaber. Yeah, he and refused to take a, the lightsaber. Yeah, and it's much more of like a peaceful monk fighting. And I, I enjoyed that style or how they went with him to do kind of that style. Yeah, because he refuses to take the lightsaber from Sabine, because Sabine could easily just use her guns. Uh, well, it, we it, but, she shows she can't shoot worth a shit. Yeah, she's a pretty terrible Mandalorian when it comes down to it. Yeah. She finally uses, like, some other Mandalorian weapons in this fight. Like, their flamethrower and some other stuff. But and the grappler. But, but like, she, could, so she, she doesn't utilize those tools in other fights when she should. Like, she's not very resourceful. Yeah. And her gunplay is pretty shitty. Uh, so she's not a very good Mandalorian, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, he refuses to take the lightsaber from her, and then he fights kind of, He fights with the Force, but he's not, like, trying to rip shit apart or smash things. He's basically being defensive with it. Yeah, it's more of a pushing away, yeah, push-pull type. The, cool special effect there was when he uh, stopped uh, Shin's lightsaber with the force. Yeah, and you and, see that wobble. And you could see him pushing the blade back with the force. On uh, That was a really cool special effect that... that uh, honestly, like, things like that pop out more than like just random lightsaber fights and backgrounds and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but basically, the whole plot of this episode was just... Ahsoka comes in. Ahsoka shows up. Finally to her own show. Hello. Yeah, finally, she finally gets there. <laughs> um, basically almost get shot down like they start shooting at the whales like uh immediately when they pop in yeah as the general's told them to do and the whales basically take take off and get the fuck out of there as soon as possible not to mention that they're also going through a giant minefield almost like the one in galaxy quest yes um so osoka gets out of there that she gets to the planet basically makes landfall while uh the droid is like holding off the fighters <clears throat> and then um she meets up with Shin's master, but, like, he's there to kind of waste her time when she realizes it, so she kind of pieces out of that fight. Uh, basically, well, like, almost Darth Maul saw right? like, because he brings the ship in and she jumps back on it, I think. Yeah, she comes... Like, she jumps out of the ship. She jumps out of the ship, lands. but no, she runs. Takes his uh, wolf dog ride. Oh, that's what it is, yeah. And then uh, finds Sabine and Ezra... And Shin and the stormtroopers that are attacking. Yeah. And they fight off for a bit until uh, General Thrawn calls them back. Yeah. And it's another another kind of example like General Thrawn's like so smart and like everyone else around him is fucking so stupid. stupid. Everyone in this show is stupid because except for Thrawn and the mercenary Jedi guy that I keep forgetting his name. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, they also, with the mercenary thing, we don't know what his motivation is yet. Yeah, but it's still interesting. But it seems like we're not going to find out either in the last episode. Well, no, because... Um... Like, he just wants to stay in this new galaxy and wants Shin to go back to, with the with Thrawn and, and be part of the new Empire. But he's like, our paths are going to different directions and he's going to stay, but they're not really explaining what it is he's looking for, which... Tells me that they probably don't have it fleshed out. Yeah. So we're probably not going to ever find out what that is. Um, but 
Thrawn is shown like he's he's the only smart character here, but he also doesn't come off as a character that wants to take over and run an empire. Yeah. So it's kind of like he just wants to get back to his home galaxy, not necessarily that he wants to overthrow the Republic and reign as the ruler of the empire. Yeah, he just wants to get home. He's yeah, like, how's like my that. business like, expenses are looking? How's my house? Cause like, Where's my wife? <laughs> he's know? fulfilling his part of the bargain with the Night Sisters, where I guess he's taking like they're dead, they're dead from that planet back to the other galaxy. Mm-hmm. Um, and even the uh, chick who like got who got there to rescue him is like it's like all the villains are like so stuck up on their pride because she's like, oh, I see that we lost this battle against. Uh, so he's like, no. We wasted their time. We're already done packing our cargo. We're ready to leave. They can't get back here in time. Yeah, so we his, can peace out and they're stuck. Yeah, his whole That's plan is like, get Sabim off my ship, get her over with Ezra, get Ahsoka away from us so that we can finish what we're doing, which took three days to do, and then they're going to leave, and then mm-hmm. they'll, they'll be stuck there because there's no way for them to get back unless they get on the Star Destroyer. Mm-hmm. Um, With voodoo magic, they'll get back on it. Yeah, Mark my words. Somehow they'll get back on it, obviously, or <sighs> maybe the whales will show up again. Somehow they'll find a way back to the other galaxy. But Thrawn's whole plan is to keep him away and keep him busy doing their own thing and have his way so he can complete his promise to the Night Sisters and then just get the hell out of there. Yeah. Uh, he has no interest in trying to kill them, stop them, crush them, put them in the ground. It's just, if they're gone, they're not in my hair and they're away. Yeah. Um, and he constantly shows that with how he interacts with uh the other uh with the other chick who's kinda of a little bit in charge but he's obviously the one in charge of everything and how he deploys his troops and calls them back when he when he needs to. Cause at this point, Ezra and Ahsoka and all of them after the certain troopers leave, they're all gonna have to like, Oh hey, how's it going? Oh, how'd you find me? Oh well this is what happened, explain all that. Yeah. And which... then make their plan to go back to the Star destroyer, but by that time they may already be Hopefully, uh, I hope they peace gone. out and just leave them all there. Yeah, uh, and even when Ahsoka shows up and after everyone disperses, she doesn't call out Sabine for being the dumbass that she is. Yeah, I mean, it really should. It would be nice if they made Sabine take responsibility for her actions and how stupid she was. But yes. I feel like they're not going to do that because again, this is made for a generation of people who are snowflakes about everything yeah. and they don't want to take responsibility for their stupid, for their stupid decisions. They want to be bailed out by somebody. So Ahsoka is going to bail her out and not, probably not tell Ezra the truth. And then they're somehow all going to get back on the star, star destroyer and get back to the regular galaxy. And while I don't see them ending this show with them killing Thrawn, <clears throat> um, and like completely stopping the threat, mm-hmm. but I mean, it's kind of interesting where they go with it. I just don't know if they're going to do a season two or they're going to try and roll this into a movie. It's really weird to do like any movie in between Jedi and Force Awakens because whatever threat it is that has to be destroyed completely or it has to lead into the First Order because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because so far this hasn't shown any First Order origins at all. <clears throat> I doubt it will. I think this is like... Because what we're told is this is like 40 to 50 years in between Jedi and Force Awakens or something. That doesn't make any... Well, yeah, I guess it yeah. could. Yeah. There's like four, at least 40 years between that. This is 10 years after Jedi. Yeah. Um. So they could obviously have a threat come up and put it down in between it. But then to me, it's kind of just an ancillary story that's just... It'd be weird to have a movie that doesn't tie into the rest of the movie. It's just smack in the middle. Yes. Whereas all the other movies, including Solo, um, all roll into how all these other movies, uh, all other existing movies, uh, is timeline. Where this would be like, here's a random adventure right smack in the middle of this that has nothing to do with anything else. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the Ewok adventure and stuff, which people basically forget about. Well, some people forget about. I, on the other <clears throat> hand, did not forget about the cartoon masterpiece of the Ewok adventures. But you always forgot about the live action movie. Yes, I did forget about the live-action movie. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, the live-action movie (laughs) of the Ewok Adventure with a little blonde girl. That was a motion picture movie before it was a cartoon. Well, there's some things that should be forgotten, And yeah, that was just a, here's a random story. doesn't have anything to do with the timeline, and everybody forgot about it. Uh, So, like, to me, it wouldn't be a marketable success to make a movie that has nothing to do, that doesn't connect to the timeline Mm -hmm. or lead to something that happens in the main timeline. Um it'd just be a waste of money and 
maybe you might make some money off the recognition of a new Star Wars movie, but I think people are burnt out on, on Star, Star Wars, Wars and films. superheroes, so like yeah. they're not going to want to go to see a Rebels 2.0 movie. <laughs> yeah. It, um, it, yeah, people are kind of, like you said, are getting burnt out or already burnt out with Star Wars and old IPs and uh like all and um uh the superhero movies it's, we're getting back into that craving of something new yeah that's the thing is that they're only like really successful new star wars character really is the mandalorian mm-hmm. and they kind of wrapped up his story nicely where they could do more with him and groku or the groku on the side which people might want to go see, but I think people like where that ended. Yeah. And we don't necessarily need a motion picture movie to tell us more about their story. Um, people didn't quite care for Boba Fett, but that's because they already built up Boba Fett in their own mind for to have his own different type of story. Mm-hmm. Um, where, like, we are talking to our friend about this. And it's like, yeah, Boba Fett didn't have a personality or storyline or anything in the movies. All your expectations are just made up BS that people kind of made up out along the way. Yeah. And so here's the real story of Boba Fett, but he's not the kind of the crew badass everybody thought he was. Hence the reason why they had a lot of the stuff with the Sand People and him like, I don't want to be a, be a bounty hunter type of thing. Because like, right. they, never, they never characterized the character to begin with. So I think a lot of people just kind of put their own uh, thoughts of what he should have been and then were mm-hmm. disappointed with what they came up with. Um, but... Again, like, out of all these, I guess, all these shows that came out, well, it was been Mandalorian, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Boba Fett, and Ahsoka, right? I think it's been all the live-action TV shows. There's one more you're missing. The the best one. What? The, um, oh, God, I forgot his name. Man, the, there's Mandalorian. Mandalorian. There's Boba Fett, there's Ahsoka, there's... The political one, the oh, political show. A- uh, Andor. Thank you. Because yeah. the Andor's... <laughs> the reason why I left that one is Andor's in a different timeline. It, it, oh, yeah. Because all those all, take place after, after, after Return of the Jedi. Jedi. Andor takes place before A New Hope. Okay, I see, I see. Why so, we... yeah, Andor's definitely really good. Um, but all these are taking place after the, after uh, Return of the Jedi... Basically, Ahsoka is the weakest show because Ahsoka really should have just been called Rebels 2.0. Because it's a Rebels movie, not a, a Rebels or, show, not a show about Ahsoka. Ahsoka's had literally two episodes that have kind of been about her backstory and her tr- grow, growing, maybe. But her character growth has been very minimal compared to, I guess, Sabine, who's basically became... Who's probably was a fan favorite who's a character that we're all hoping gets killed because she yes. makes she bad decisions left <laughs> and right. Please let Sabine die. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. It's a, I it's know. A, this is a cool little Disney kids show in Star in Wars Live Universe, action. Which is kind of weird because the newest show that's going to be coming so out bad. with, uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, Chris, P- not Chris, Chris Pine. Pine. Is it Chris Pine? No, it's not Chris Pine. It's the I guy. I want to say Chris Pine. It's the guy that plays Watson. Oh, that's what. Um... Yeah, where it's the space captain with a bunch of kids and they're flying over. Yeah, they're, all, they're lost in space. Yeah, it's lost in space minus the... With Jude Law, I believe it is. Yeah. Jude Law. Uh... Yeah, it's it's the, the it hasn't come out yet, but it's the next big Star Wars show. show. So... Is it Firebat? That would be upcoming. Skel- it's, I think Skeleton, Skeleton Crew. Crew. That's it. Eight episodes. Oh, Sherlock Holmes 3. It's in yeah, production. Star Wars Skeleton Crew is going to be basically lost in space with Jude Law and a bunch of kids. Okay. Uh, we'll have to see where that goes. But again, that feels like that was one that's going to be made for kids. Mm-hmm. Ahsoka was a show that seemed like it was going to be made for the, the same fans of The Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett, but it's made for kids. Yeah. It's made for that generation who grew up on Rebels because that's who the show caters to. Um, so again, it's still the weakest thing. I don't think, I don't think the last episode is going to like turn it around. No. Um, next, uh, big thing is this week, uh, wheel of time. Well, we're just going to get to that, Aww. but we'll jump to wheel of time now. Then fine. Wheel of time, uh, season two, Yay. uh, it's so good. Episode Please seven just, it. just came out. There is going to be a season three, but keep watching it. Uh, season two, uh, episode seven came out. It was really, really good. Just almost like as good as episode seven 
uh, mm. was in the first uh, season. I think that's the one where they reveal that Rand was the Dragon Reborn. Yes. Um, this one, everything's starting to come together. Almost all the characters are showing up in the City of Fall. Um, <laughs> basically, we find out that Moraine in this episode was not stilled. Yes. Uh, where she was cut, just cut off. She was being blocked. Um, using which does come up in the books. These because what kind of the whole progression of like everybody's powers in this book in the book is that they start rediscovering all these old techniques that um, were lost in the past. That the Forsaken were are just the Aes Sedai and the I guess the Sedais that were able to channel from thousands of years ago. They have all those old techniques. They weren't lost to them. So what basically happened was Ishmael shielded her from the source and tied off the thread in a knot so he doesn't have to keep maintaining it. And it's just she can't use use the power because uh, she's been shielded from it. Um, it takes Lan to go talk to the false dragon to, fi to figure this out and have Ran actually like look at her with the one power to see that, oh, hey, yeah, there's a knot here. Um, that he can cut because only only men can see the one power that they channel. Only women can see the one power they channel. That's why them fighting each other is a really difficult thing because they can't see what the other's doing and be able to counterattack it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like just kind of like shit just happens, right? Um, but because he can see it, he can see the knot that Ish Ishmael put on her. He cuts it, and then boom, she's able to access the one power again. Mm -hmm. She has full, gets her full power, is ready to leave with Ran, and boom, the Admiral Seat shows up. Who yes. basically this episode is to, to kind of like break off Moraine's relationship she, with her. Yeah, but I thought they did it in a pretty good way. It's not super emotional and like sappy how they did it. I thought it. the Moraine should have thrown more in her face because what we see is that what the original deal was is that mm -hmm. the war had just ended and Moraine and her two blue uh, Aes Sedai who were excited about getting on with their lives after the war's over. Um, I guess their mistress in the, in the Blue Aja is a seer has a vision that of the dragons being reborn. Basically the vision of uh, Rand's uh, birth birth when his father's fighting the Aiel warrior in the snow. Uh, and she gives birth to Rand, and she has that vision that he's been reborn right now. And basically sets him on the mission of, like, you have to f you have to go find her. Find, him. Hit, go find the dragon. And then the Admiral C is supposed to get the tower in a position to where they're going to support the dragon and not enslave him. But... But... <laughs> so Moraine... Did, the, does her does her job and finds yeah. the dragon, but the Admiral Seat did not do anything really to change the politics of the tower to get them to support the dragon rather than to cage him and use him as a tool, which is which is I understand now why we're seeing like Egwene and them being used as the slave tools. Yes. Because it's to show that like eventually Egwene will become the Admiral Seat and because of her experience of being a, used as a slave, she'll never let that happen to any Aes Sedai or anybody that channels it to be used that way. Yeah. Because basically, that's the Ab the Ar Arnold Seat's plan, or the uh, Tower of Lost plan, is to cage the dragon and then Just use, him use... use him as a weapon when they need to and then keep him under control. Yeah. And not let him channel freely whatsoever. Which was not the plan, and that really <clears throat> takes off Moraine and Lan. So they ask him to go contact ex-girlfriend Lanfear uh, Lanfear to try and rescue him out of the clutches of the admiral seat in in the in the town they're in. Yeah, which she does in a beautiful beautiful dress by the way. Yeah, she just destroys everything and the costume design on her amazing. and even on uh, Ishmael is like really done well. Gosh. This is a costume design in this whole show is just beautifully done. Oh, and we also find out that Moraine's uh, nephew is a dark fiend. Is a dark fiend and is taking orders from that red Aja, the, or that, I guess the black Aja, the, or black Aja, yes, uh, chick who who is the red Aja, one that we've been dealing with this whole time, um, telling her that he has to kill Moraine and he needs to kill his mother if she suspects it. The mother finds out and completely turns him in, and uh, yep, not, <laughs> it's not like, a second thought. Fuck you, because like she's like, I know my sister's an asshole, but. Uh, she knows what's the difference between right and wrong, like, and how hard those, those decisions are. So, like, she immediately turns in her son and, and locks him up to protect Moraine. Um, and then 
basically when they're about to escape and they open up the way gate to go to the city of fall, which is kind of like the weird thing about tower law and all this stuff is that all this falls a prophecy that the dragon will, re- will be reborn. He'll announce himself in the city of fall. Uh, there'll be a great battle where like, you'll see his image in the sky. Like there's a prophecy written down on how things are supposed to play out. And Moraine and them are trying to make things follow the way the prophecy goes. Yep, as much as possible. Because that's how things need to play out for them to end the way where the dragon saves the world. Where everyone else is like, we have our own plans and we're going to do it our way. And like the Admiral Seat's plan was to cage Ran and have him announce himself there in that in Moraine's home city. Yep. Uh, like Cambridge or whatever it's called. I can't remember the name of the town. Yeah, it's not Cambridge, but it's... It's something somewhat. because of the sea, but it's not like the main... Uh, kingdom seat where Elaine's from either. Right. Um, but she's going to have him announce himself there and they're going to keep him caged for the final battle. Mm-hmm. But Moraine and them break him out and they are about to go through the way gate and that's when the Admiral seat shows up and then because Moraine swore bond to the Admiral on the bonding rod which forces her to list commands, she commands her to close the gate which completely breaks all the trust Moraine had in her. Yeah. Because uh, it's really weird. The Admiral seems see, see, like, oh, you lied to me. You told me you were still, then you're not. Because she obviously opened up the gate. And it's like, you don't understand the whole situation. You just showed up after they cut the knot and had the whole explanation that she was being shielded, not that she was stilled. Because basically it takes more than one eye to die to, to st- uh, still a, a man. It would take more than one forsaken to do the same thing to Aes Sedai. Yeah. So, she didn't get the explanation of it, but, like, she immediately kind of broke her trust and won't listen to yeah. uh, Moraine. So she forces her to close the gate, and that's when Lanfear shows up. Uh, Ram basically forces, uh, tells uh, Lanfear that she can't kill Moraine. Um, but they all of them, Moraine, Lanfear, Ran and uh, Lan all go through the way gate together to fall, leaving the Admiral seat behind. Because <clears throat> uh, basically they need to go there, mm-hmm. and Brandon are all going to probably end up helping uh, take the city uh, back from the occupying army. Uh, Gwen is probably going to get fr- uh, freed. And Def- splatter that yeah. chick. <laughs> I actually thought, because like, they, tra- they had to show off their power in a training session with the Gwen and her, like, trainer and like she was trying like don't make her look foolish or anything like that because then she'll be punished obviously and so she does really well because she's super powerful uh to the point where like this trainer's trying to be nice and pl- and kind to her like you would be to a pet and like try to show kind of affection to her like hey you're doing good we'll be a good team and Gwen just kind of looks her in the eye and says I want to fucking kill you yeah <laughs> uh, to- I just love <laughs> Wayne's face like you can punch me all you want right now, but guess what, bitch? You are going to be dead. Yeah, because it's after seeing like she washes her hands for her, washes Push her, her face. face. She's like trying to be like nice and gentle, trying to be a caring pet owner, basically, <laughs> and doesn't understand that like this is wrong on so many levels. Levels because they don't see them as people; they see them as tools. Yeah. So like Egwene looking at her, no matter what, even though like you're being rewarded for doing a good job, saying I'm going to just. Remember, one day I'm going to fucking kill you. Pisses her off and she leaves. It's like, that's that kind of sets the stone. Like, yeah, this is why the Admiral Seat's plan is not going to work. Because you don't want them to do that to Aes Sedai. Why would you do that to a man that can channel just before the fact that he might go crazy? Yeah. Because um, that's, the, that's the only thing anybody fears about men channeling is the fact that there's a taint on the one power that makes them go crazy. And they end up killing all their loved ones. But, like, the reality of that situation... Is in the prologue of the of Eye of the World, Lewis Sermon is in his castle and he's killed everyone. Doesn't realize he's killed everyone though because he was kind of forced to do it by the Dark One because of the madness. And then he breaks the world in his uh, distress of knowing he murdered his family. Right. Because basically they end up healing his eyes so he can see his dead wife and kids and know that they're all dead and that he did it. Um. So it's not like you go mad and you just kill everybody and you're just constantly mad killing everything. Like, he went mad, killed his family, and then was lucid and was mm-hmm. perfectly fine until they healed him and made him see what he did. And then he just broke the world and dis- and changed everything. So, like, the madness that's going to hit men is kind of a weird thing where, like, throughout the books, 
Rand's dealing with that, but it's like dealing with anybody who someone who's dealing with like, all right, I'm having visions, I'm having hearing voices, and he's learning how to channel out what's real, what's not. Versus somebody else telling you, oh, no, everything you're seeing is not, not real, everything you're hearing is not real, and then mm-hmm. deciding for you. So it's kind of a weird, weird thing to have somebody else tell you that you're going crazy when, like, you're not. Yeah. And trying to convince them that, no, I'm not going crazy, or no, I know how to control this. It's just, well, you're going to go crazy eventually, so we're just going to cage you. Um, so the next episode should be pretty good, because um, it should be, like, at least two more episodes. I think there's ten episodes in the first uh, season. Yeah. So um, hopefully there might be 10 episodes in for season two, but don't quote us or we can find out right now. Yeah, we'll look on IMDb. Um, we also have, I think it's 10 episodes. It might yeah. be. It might, it might or it might say. just be eight. Yeah. Know, they've been pretty long this season, too. Yeah, they've all been about an uh, hour or hour, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so that's episode eight. Episode it says episode twenty one. Oh, yeah, season three. There, yeah. just there. Okay, years two. We think we'll only have the episodes that next episode season eight, eight. is at eight. So don't know how many episodes for this season. No, that eight episodes. Okay, last so season. next so episode will be, will be the last one. Okay, so last episode should be. Gwen gets freed from by Naive and Elaine, and they all meet up with Rand and Perrin, yeah, and possibly even Matt. Yeah, because Matt's, yeah, Matt, Matt's in Matt's in fall now too, uh, being manipulated by Ishmael. Yep. So and so, then Rand will announce be announced there. Well, he'll make his announcement that he's the Dragon Reborn. Yeah. Uh, to to in a, such a way that the whole world will know about it. Um, which will happen in the fall, and it'll probably be them removing the occupation of this army and completely defeating them. Yeah. Which should be, make for a pretty good episode. So definitely check that out. comes out on Thursdays on Amazon Prime. Uh, if you have Prime, it's free to watch, so definitely check it out. Yep. Uh, next show that came out, we have not watched all of it, just the first episode, is Castlevania Nocturne. Yes. Um, I was actually cons- surprised that the timeline takes place. It takes place in 1790. Yep. Something because uh, it was like the first up, first sequence was 1780 something, and then it's nine years later in France, and it's like so it's 1790s is when this takes place. Mm-hmm. Um, again, with all the Castlevania shows, really good action. This one, the main character is going to be Richter uh, Belmont, who is the main character in the Castlevania game that comes before Symphony of the Night, which I don't know which one that is. I just know Symphony of the Night opens up with Richter fighting Dracula. Um, and then it goes into Alucard going through the castle. Mm-hmm. There is a game called uh, Nocturne, or uh, let's see what it is. Uh, Castlevania games. Okay. Castlevania games. Let's see. It was one that came out on like Xbox as a multiplayer only game. Uh, multiplayer yeah because you could uh, it was a co-op game oh okay so Dracula's Curse Belmont's Revenge Castlevania 4 Bloodline so so Castlevania Dracula X is the one with Richter that's the Super Nintendo game and then Symphony of the Night comes out with where he plays Alcar and that's one that's been remade or redone constantly so it's on modern consoles basically now Um, Legends uh, Darkness, Circle of the Moon, Chronicles, uh, of Innocence. Uh, where is it? Lord of Shadow. Mirror of Faith. These are the original games. There was another one where you were playing up four people and it was kind of going through the castle again. Uh, not Harmony Distance. Was it Chronicles? It was something that you don't know. But yeah. Anyway, it's not listed in the main list of games here, but that's probably because it was a like Xbox arcade game. Okay. Uh, Judgment, Harmony, Despair. He's looking at spinoffs on the wiki. Yeah. But anyway. But it had it's... like characters like the like the young blonde girl. Like yeah. Blonde girl. Those are characters in that game you can play as. Okay, so they're pulling from <clears throat> that game into this. Yeah, somewhat. Um, okay, but they also have some of their own lore. Clearly, like way their way, like his mother was doing magic and, and other stuff. That they're probably descendants of that of the bloodline from the first movie, first the, show, 
For the first show, yeah, where, like, <laughs> the wizard that Belmont hooks up with. Yeah. Yeah. That, I, I figured that. That's how they got the magic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, Really, yeah. Really good. Great action, as always. So, yeah, uh, we'll great f- opening intro of uh, young Belmont uh, Richter and his mom uh in boston trying to get to a boat yeah it was very interesting to see that they start off with a belmont who's a female uh vampire hunter and not just a wizard not just a sorceress she's the one with the whip and everything it's disappointing to see but it kind of makes sense that over time they lost the night the morning star whip yeah so they just have a regular whip that they're using and the and the weapons hopefully maybe throughout this uh show they'll they'll show uh them getting those artifacts back again to fight Mm-hmm. Um, but or create their own new one, possibly. Um, but what's great about it is that um, it's a, it's a different, a new story that's not not necessarily. I don't know if it's gonna have Dracula back or some just new vampire plot, which it could be as well. But basically, Richter sees his mom get killed by a vampire, who basically says, "Yeah, she killed somebody special to me too. This is revenge," and like it's that loop of revenge things where he doesn't Mm -hmm. he's not going to kill Richter then but he will kill him one day so he basically lets Richter grow up to become a vampire hunter and then um after like kind of their introductory fight of them as adults and while also playing the French Revolution apparently yes uh because that's the time frame this takes place in and in Paris well uh, it's outside of Paris outside of Paris yeah well, they have their fight in the country. I'm assuming this is going to take some of the stuff's going to start taking place in main, mainland, Main Street, Paris during the revolution mm-hmm. in the background. Uh, the vampire that killed his mother f- shows up in Paris at the end of the episode. Of episode one. Uh, yeah, of episode one. Uh, getting ready for this vampire messiah that's supposed to be showing yep. up, but we don't know who that is. And yet. it looks like the vampire that killed his mother, he looks uh, Native American, which I thought that was a cool yeah. twist that they had a Native American vampire. Uh, and that's another thing I really like about this show is that they show vampires from all different cultures. Yeah, even from the first come, season they did, yeah, yeah. And come together. And, and, yeah, I just really love the designs that they do for them. Yeah, we still have to watch the rest of the All eight episodes are out on Netflix now. I wish Netflix yep. would do kind of more of a uh, weekly, like, drop instead of just hey binge the whole show right now yeah like uh the great british <clears throat> baking show which they have a new season out and it is delightful and you should watch that as well yeah uh, that one's done uh we- weekly a new episode comes out but like we could always talk about that if we ever run out of stuff <laughs> yeah, but good. but there's a lot of stuff dropping this week uh too because we have our flag me uh means death is going to be out this week and Loki's coming out either this week or next week as well. Yeah, so there's there's ton of stuff landing in October, ton of games landing as well that we'll have to talk about, um, as well as I don't know what movies might be coming up, but I know there's going to be a ton of games and plus horror movies. Marvels is that coming out this month or is that uh, next? I think it's probably month. November. Okay, I don't know for sure. There's not been a like, exact release date on that yet. Uh, but speaking of movies, a uh, movie we most recently watched was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Because that came to streaming, I think, last week, but yeah, we didn't watch it. Uh, it was It's the one cre- oh, created by Seth Rogen, uh, Evan Goldberg, and Jeff Rowe, uh, directed by Jeff Rowe and Kyle, Kyler Spears. <clears throat> um, this is basically kind of a retelling of their origin again, but putting the turtles more as teenage kids and not like as... Older teenagers that are urban adults yeah <laughs> which is what most of them usually are yeah i do like the fact that like it didn't seem like they were black superheroes anymore like michael no. bay's made, definitely made me feel like these are black characters yeah um and not just like teen- teenage kids who grew up in the sewer um they do they have a lot of callbacks to all the old characters from the tv show mm-hmm. um but they've changed a lot of like their roles like uh rocksteady and bebop are in it uh, the gecko's in it, the crocodile, the uh, Genghis frog is in there. Uh, there's a giant roach character, which I don't remember from the cartoon, but maybe it was. Or it could just be a brand new one. could be a brand new one. Um, but, like, the weird thing is that we notice is all the humans are, grote- are are animated and designed grotesquely <laughs> yes. ugly. Everybody's ugly in this except for... The turtles. The turtles and, like... 
the mutants look like what you expect them to look like. Yeah. Um, but the human beings are probably the most grotesque looking characters. Humans that you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> like, their proportions are off, their faces are jacked yeah. up, they're just ugly all the way around. Yeah. Um, but the art style, like, is appealing, though, except yeah. for the humans. <laughs> Yeah, because it's it's not three it's not stop motion, but it almost look feels like it's stop motion, motion. with how it, how it animates a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and how things move uh, within the action. Uh, I guess my one critique is, is that like they all with all turtles movies except for like the original Turtles one and Turtles two, uh, they always try to change the lore. Yeah. And it's like, the lore is ridiculous. I get that. But everything you change it to is even more fucking ridiculous. It's stupid. Just keep it to the stupidity, stupid stuff it was in the cartoon where Splinter was a person turned into a rat and the turtles were in the ooze and they, and they, and they mutated. Not that, oh, this is a genetic experiment by Baxter and now Superfly has somehow has his brain. But, and, yeah. And they, they're also supposed to be somewhat genetically connected to Baxter, which makes no sense whatsoever. Like, it's all supposed to, this all comes from the time in the 80s where, like, everybody thought radioactive ooze can do so much much different things that was used as, like, the MacGuffin in all, like, superhero and monster movies that, yeah. oh, radioactive Toxic stuff. Avenger. Toxic Avenger. Toxic uh, Avenger. Swamp Thing. Uh, Ninja Turtles. Radiation, toxic ooze or whatnot mu mutated the, something into something else. Yep, you step in it, you eat it, you slather on your skin, and suddenly you got superpowers. Yeah, like why does why like <laughs> the weird like why Splinter is a rat that just becomes a giant rat that somehow has the a Chinese that, that ages longer somehow has a Chinese accent. Yeah, but it was but you know who's from New York. The turtles just grow up to be big turtles, and like the other mutants grow up to be a little bit, a little bit mutated from what they were. It's like some of this doesn't make sense, and like you're, they're trying to explain it. It's like just go with what the original stuff was. Radioactive ooze does shit. <laughs> yeah, you um, don't have to put science behind it. Yeah, and but I mean, ultimately, it is a fun movie, and it's definitely made for kids. It has that Nickelodeon feel to it. Yeah, with, it is with it. very kids. It's yeah, hundred percent a kids movie. It's not a deep thinking adult movie at all. I feel like they casted Donatello's voice actor and Michelangelo's voice actor wrong because they needed to swap them. Yeah, because Michelangelo is always known as the youngest, but the person with the youngest sounding voice was Donatello, mm -hmm. and Michelangelo had like this deeper voice. Which didn't fit right. It's like put him, put that voice on the nerd, and put and put the high pitched like kid, kitty voice on Michelangelo because he's supposed to be the hyperactive one anyway. Right. Um. I also don't feel like the personalities came with that much. No. Like, like Donatello didn't have like a ton of inventions to use. Michelangelo wasn't always like being goofy, and Raphael wasn't like mad at every at the, everything. And yeah. Those are usually the staples of their characters. Well, they also didn't really do any character growth for the turtles either yeah because that's where the finale it's not that the turtles saved the day it's that the humans helped the turtles save the day yeah i felt like well they're not really saving the world are they if the whole community came together and say and saved the day in the end yeah like i because the whole point is just, i guess the turtles want to be more part of the human world but they're mutants so yeah they're they, well they also accepted. want to go to school and be normal like teenagers, teenagers, which is weird. Go to prom, <laughs> and it's like, nah. Yeah, so like, it's not. I don't feel like it falls under like. If you look at all the other movies with Ninja Turtles, it doesn't hit any of the character beats that they usually have. Mm -hmm. It is just a teenage adventure happening, where they don't really have any of the traits other than they use the different weapons. Yep. Yeah. So. So. <laughs> it's I. Was it better than the last one we saw, which was uh, with the old Nickelodeon anime one was the last one I saw, I think, which was okay. The Michael Bay ones, I think, are garbage. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is good for young kids, maybe an early teen. Yeah, it's definitely not our generation stuff. So, and I guess the, the thing why it's weird for us or for me is that this is my childhood uh, creation IP that was created when I was a kid. Yeah. And instead of them making new IPs for children to watch that aren't like dumbed down like uh 
um, Blues Clues or like well, Boo- Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. Like well, those- Blues Clues was for kind of that preschool uh, Sesame Street kids. So and yeah, all the like, adults are talking about it nowadays. Because um, they grew up. But even it. even Jimmy Neutron. What, well, that, or, yeah, I'll give you the Or Jimmy. the barnyard, backyard stuff that was like afternoon cartoons that kids would watch is like they're so dumbed down that they're that they're literally for babies mm-hmm. that you can't take those uh, those IPs and mature them up to make movies or new content out of it. So they're taking the stuff that didn't talk down to kids, which was my generation, and then you're making movies out of them for a newer cartoons. or cartoons for newer generation where it's like. People like me are like, this is okay, it doesn't feel right, Where, but it's not made for me anymore. It's like, why are you taking my shit and changing it? Why don't you make up something new? Right. <laughs> um, but again, that's the way things go. As, as we see this movie, that's one reason why we're talking about like Indiana Jones didn't hit hit much with the younger crowd because they have no nostalgia for Indiana Jones like the older, older audiences do. Mm-hmm. And you can't make movies for a younger demographic that appeals to the older demographic because then you're talking down to the older de- demographic and they're like, well, this sucks because I'm not stupid. Exactly. <laughs> um, but this is a good animation, definitely a different style. Uh, going with a fresh expectations, not thinking of anything you already know of the turtles other than their colors and that kind of just the, the bare, bare minimum of their characters, which is Leonardo's the leader, Raphael... I get he's not even a hothead or a rogue in no. this at all. He's like just him, the, he's just the bigger brother. Yeah, him and Mikey are really in the background of yeah, and the like, two turtles because Donatello uh, like, has, has has the nerdy stuff on him. Yeah, but Donatello and Leonardo, I feel like, have more lines and more to do yeah. in this than the other two. Um, I wouldn't be surprised but, if they make a sequel from it. Um, cause I think, oh, I'm it, sure. I think they were planning on doing a new TV show with it. I, I could definitely see, like, definitely go to a new TV show. The thing with Turtles is, like, it makes it for a better TV show than movie. Yes. Um, because you can do Monster of the Week thing and you can wrap it up in 30 minutes. Uh, again, the voice actors are all done pretty well. Like, we like you said, I just think you'd have to mit- change Donatello and Michelangelo's voice actors mm-hmm. around so that it's the sounds fit their ages better. Um, but if you did a cartoon, maybe you could make it so you could characterize them be- better and be more, because this movie just, like I said, didn't have real character growth with them. Yeah. It just had them achieving their goal of being accepted and helping the other mut- mutants be accepted versus them getting over their interpersonal problems like they usually have. Yep. Um, but decent try i mean we'll see what the where they go with it i can see them doing more with it if they want to mm-hmm. pretty stacked cast with like jackie chan jackie chan post malone ice cube uh gina carl G- uh giancarlo esposito um paul rudd hannibal uh Buress. um wow mr beast was a guy in times square <laughs> wow why why put him on the imdb list when he's a Again. fucking background person Again, it's to get yeah. the Mr. Beast fans to watch. This kid looks super familiar. <laughs> Which one? Uh, the kid that played He was in Raphael. Mighty Ducks Game Changer. That's, that's what why. it is. All right, yeah, my, Mighty Ducks uh, kids are in this. Yeah, so that's uh, <laughs> Ninja Turtles. It's a decent movie for kids. If you're an adult, it'll be fun, but it's not going to like match up completely. I mean, it's nice that they included all the old characters. Yeah. Uh, that... Almost nobody else has ever included other than Rock City and Bebop. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of cool that those are there, but they've kind of rewritten how every, everybody Everyone is. is. Yeah. Um, so moving on to video game news. Uh, yeah. Jim Ryan hit a PlayStation a step down. Yes. Uh, people are thinking that's because either he stepped down or he's been asked to leave because of the fuck up with uh, <laughs> Activision and Damn. Xbox. uh uh, deal. Um, and mainly, I think people think that, and that might be true. We don't we, honestly nobody will know the truth except for him and, and the heads of, of PlayStation. But basically, uh, because so he, he pushed and pushed to not to have the deal to go through, and then ended up having to concede. They got a worse deal brokered with with Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have got more games to be probably cross platform. But because of the asshole behavior that they're doing 
and like the quotes coming out saying, I don't care about Call of Duty, I just don't want you to have a merger. Uh, comments coming out, they end up getting a shittier deal. And Sony has also noticed that their market share has been shrinking in Japan versus the Western uh, market, where like they've literally for the past decade or so catered more to Western market. And Nintendo is definitely scooping up all the Japanese mm -hmm. market where they're supposed to be the strongest at. So with him out and them putting uh, other uh, Japanese uh, business people as the head of the company f temporarily for now, and maybe we'll even see it be permanently, they're probably going to be moving more towards uh, focusing on trying to get that Japanese market yep. back under their control. That Japanese-Asian market. Yeah, which those... That that culture is not is not necessarily for war games and stuff like Call of Duty is not a top selling game in Japan because uh, they, reasons they don't they don't glorify war because hey they lost the last one pretty badly so they don't make games about war or about guns and nuclear bombings because they don't have that stuff in their country where Westerners do that shit all the time we love and we love that stuff so it doesn't mean that like they're going to stop making first person shooters, but like Sony's going to, you'll probably start seeing a lot of maybe Japan only releases like we do with PlayStation two yeah, or PlayStation three, a lot of art JRPGs that don't come to the uh, West or something like that. Or it takes a long time for it to <laughs> come, come to here. the West. Or we'll see just more games like that appeal more to the Japanese culture than they do the West. If that is true that they're going to go for more of a Japanese route to regain that market. That's just one of the theories out there. Other theories that he fucked up so bad, they fired him and they're just going to try and, uh, regain wherever they can because in the long run they still have outsold Microsoft on consoles mm -hmm. uh, for this generation. Uh, what's definitely helped Microsoft is that Starfield's only on their platform. The next Elder Scrolls only going to be on their platform, and literally, base literally Sony's going to have to catch up with the PC market because Microsoft is already doing console and PC. Nintendo has its own uh, death grip on its own market where. Basically, nobody's going to take over the mobile market like they have, other than, other than the crappy casual game stuff that's on phones. But nobody's going to put... Everybody's going to have a phone, but everybody's also going to have a Nintendo Switch or a handheld mm -hmm. Nintendo game to play Mario or something on. Uh, but Sony's not going to be able to compete there. They basically failed every time they came with a handheld. Uh, the way to go is definitely PC because that's up and coming more and more. Although PC has all the issues of their hardware not being able to be optimized properly because everybody has something different. Yeah. Um, so I don't see consoles going away anytime soon, but um, the PC market is probably the next biggest growing market versus handheld. You're not going to get a lot of dis diversity in handhelds outside of what Nintendo already has done. Mm -hmm. um, and Sony, right now, they really kind of missed the ball with their uh, state of play. They didn't announce any new games. All they kind of did is start ramping up marketing for Spider-Man. But once that lands, that's going to be a flash in the pan that nobody's going to care afterwards. Yeah. Like, as good as the Spider-Man games were and, like, the Miles Morales game, nobody's raving about them years later. Like, they do, like, with uh, God of War Ragnarok. Yep. Uh, or with The uh, Last of Us or yeah. Nathan Drake. They're just flash in the pan games that are going to be, like, really great when they come out and it's going to be a giant collectathon. Yeah, a lot of stuff is going to be free and not microtransaction every costume there is on there. Which is great. But it's a collectathon. It's the same formula that we've already played a million times. It's just a new story in that same engine. Uh, people are going to play it, say it's a great game, and then they're going to wait for the next big thing. And there's nothing coming down the pipeline for that. Yeah, because they um, haven't announced. So no one can get <clears throat> excited. Yeah. Um, as far as we know, the FTC uh, failed, their, failed their lawsuit with the Xbox Activision. Okay stuff so it should be going through and that deal should be completed by the 18th of october mm -hmm. but for some reason the ftc is holding an internal trial with the case against xbox but even by the time that's ready to go to trial it'll be after the date that this deal has to be set so nobody really knows what the hell fc if the fcc is doing like, burning money that's all they're doing they're like, burning money and then they which got in trouble for which makes doing sense that beforehand. which just makes sense yeah because they got in trouble they got their budget cut because they were losing all these cases. And even Congress said, why are you taking on cases you're going to lose? You're being stupid. Um, so why they're doing this, we don't know. It's not, it doesn't seem like it's going to delay anything. We'll have to wait to see what the news is in the next couple of weeks to see if like something happens that changes something. Because the CMA is ready to go through. 
with it. Everyone else is ready to go through with it. They can't use the same case they used before because Microsoft has already sold off cloud gaming uh, licensings to Ubisoft to do. Mm-hmm. So there's no monopoly on that market like they thought there was going to be. So I don't know what the FTC plans to do with having an internal case against this uh, merger that even if they win in their own internal court system doesn't really do anything because the federal court system already said that they lost and they have no there's no meaning no no reason to stop this merger so we'll have to see what happens um people at microsoft are confused too like they don't know what the fuck's going on like, yeah so we'll just assume by the 18th this will be done and then maybe we'll start seeing old uh old brands from activision get re- revitalized which will be nice mm-hmm. um because that will be one thing that Microsoft will have on Sunday. If they, all the old type gamers at, who work at Xbox will bring back old IPs that we haven't seen forever that Activision has been sitting on. And that will be a nice new uh, rejuvenation of IPs and gaming in the industry instead of like, other than Alan Wake coming out this month, um, there's Spider-Man this, uh, this month as well. Uh, nothing's really November or December because everybody's pushing all their games to October, which is all what Assassin's Creed, Alan Wake, and Spider-Man, the three big ones. Yeah. There'll be another Call of Duty, probably, which, uh, who gives a, who cares about that? Um, because Call of Duty, the next Call of Duty seems to be that it was DLC that just got turned into a game. Because the hunt for more money is what it should be called. Yeah. Um, but there's no other big brand new IPs over the horizon that we know about. Supposedly Microsoft has something up their sleeve, which could be another Gears game, uh, which would be good. But unless somebody says, hey, here's a brand new game that's coming out, uh, nobody really has anything on the horizon. Unless there's a mystery shadow drop we don't know about. Yeah. um, The new Star Wars game, I don't think that has a release date on it, so nobody knows what's happening next year. We'll have to wait to find out. Uh, October is the big month for games, though. Uh, all the major games that you've ever heard about, if they're not out yet, they're coming out this month or they're coming out in 2024. There's nothing really coming out in November or December. Yeah. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, but that's the gaming news. Uh, for Cyberpunk 2077, we already talked about the 2.0 update. Now we've played a little bit of Phantom Liberty. Um, haven't finished it quite yet. Once we finish it, we'll have a full review on our website. Okay. Uh, for that, uh, but so far so good. It's done very well. Idris Elba has done a fantastic job with uh, the acting he does in this game so far. Uh, the little added bits from Johnny Silverhand are also great. I thought it was hilarious that while you're taking like the presidential oath, which you can opt in to do or not, he's making fun of you and t- basically talking shit at you while you're taking it. Um, the introduction to Idris Elba's character is really nice because he... I would suggest if you play with headphones, it's probably the best or surround sound system because when you first meet him, you don't get to see him. He comes up behind you uh, and puts a gun in your gut and starts asking you questions and you can't, and he doesn't want you to look away from the uh, basketball game. So you don't see him. You just hear him in your ear. And if you're wearing headphones, you'll hear which ear he, he's speaking he's to. Moving, he's moving his head. A little bit, yeah. Or you're moving your head and you'll hear how it changes. Um, but he's he does a great job in it. Um, a lot of people have kind of criticized his acting in it, but I think it's because they expected him to have a British accent. Uh, but uh, he's, he's an American <laughs> agent, so he has an American accent. And his American accent isn't necessarily the greatest, but it's still Idris Elba. It still sounds great to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, his British accent, he sounds more of a badass with that than he does with the American one. But it wouldn't make sense for him to be a British citizen if he's a, spe- a special agent for the new United States of America. So makes sense that he's American. Um, but other than that, uh, at least the first act of that uh, of that DLC is done really well with a crazy-ass boss fight. I will say I'm disappointed with the introduction of a little bit of, of a quick time event that happens uh, as part of a sequence. Hmm. Could they have done it without the quick time? Yeah, they could have just had it be a, a cinematic sequence that happens. The quick time events that are there are kind of not really important because it's not like it's a quick time event to kill the boss. It's a quick time event to transition from one area to another. Well, also, I in the main game you don't really have you don't the, have them. You don't have quick time, so that's weird to just suddenly throw a quick time event when you're not s- set up. You know the. 10 plus hours of the game that you've already played. Yeah, you've never done a quick time event. And you've never prior. done a quick time 
I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's weird that it's there, and that's the one thing that did stand out. I was like, why Why is this a quick time event? I re- you should have just left it as a cinematic sequence instead of adding some interactivity there. Whether or not they do more throughout it, who knows. Um, I do know that this does have a few new endings in it, so we'll have to see how that pans out once we get through those, yeah. uh, which will be interesting. Um, but so far, so good. Uh, the gunplay, the new uh, with new uh, the perks work, and the new uh, game mechanics, like literally being able to deflect bullets back into people with the samurai swords, is really a lot of fun. Um, and the quick hacking is done re- really well this time around too. So definitely a fun game. If you have not played it, um, definitely pick it up. I suggest picking up Phantom Liberty because that's just more good content in there. Um, but even if you don't, or if you played it when it first came out and you haven't played it since. Pick it up now. Um, the 2.0 update has completely changed the way the game plays. Down from the driving to the uh, gameplay completely. Nothing is exactly the same as it was. Mm-hmm. Um, they've even changed levels on certain spec uh, skill checks uh, that were lower originally. Now they're a little bit higher. So definitely check it out. Definitely recommend it. Um, like I said, we'll have the full review at nerdcrusade.com once uh, I finish playing through the DLC. It'll we'll probably be another week or so. Um, but that's our show this week. Yeah. Uh, please let us know what you think. If you saw the Turtles movie, let us know what you think. If you're a fan of the old stuff or you like the new, let us know. Uh, you can find us at www.nerdcrusade.com. Find our podcast wherever podcasts are at on Apple, Spotify, uh, Alexa, whatever. It, we have it set up to go everywhere. <laughs> Uh, we're also on Twitch every week at uh, the Nerd Crusade, dot, uh, Nerd Crusade on Twitch, uh, where you can find us playing Starfield right now and some Phantom Liberty. Uh, most of us still playing a lot of Starfield because that game is just loads of fun to play um, and relaxing. So catch us there this week on that, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.